on September 11, 2001, my wife and I had just moved in with our two young kids to uh, a new apartment, apartment we just bought, which happened to be two blocks away from the World Trade Center in New York. I was beginning to work for the day. Suddenly I was aware that there was a terrible noise outside and I went out onto the deck, which is right outside that room, and saw uh, an enormous airplane coming right down the west side of Manhattan. And then as it came closer and closer, it became obvious that he was going to hit the building and did. Just for our viewers who are just tuning in right now, you're looking at a live picture of the World Trade Center Tower where, according to eyewitness Sean Murtaugh, a twin engine plane or possibly a 737 passenger jet flying into the World Trade Center. It appears to be still embedded inside the building. Sean, are you in a position right now to hear whether... It was terrible. It was terrible, awful, in, in all the ways you can imagine. Um, the uh, <sighs> you know, I was safe. I was protected, uh, of course. Um, it's a remarkable thing about most terror attacks that uh, if you're only, uh, you, you don't need to be very far away to be safe. So my immediate reaction was to think, uh, you know, that it had rendered the whole art-making process weak or, or crippled it or rendered it irrelevant. Why do I say that? Because the real wound of September 11th was a mental wound. It was a psychological wound. So, how do you photograph what's inside the, the mind of somebody? You can't. It's not possible. You can only photograph the surface. It was about a year later that I thought that I began to imagine a way that you could photograph uh, the faces of people and you might be able to get at something of the sense of uncertainty and fear and doubt that the September 11th events had left behind. And I began to photograph strangers in the street. So it was important to me from early on to look not only at people in my own city on whose faces you could maybe see some residue of that mental wound, but to look in other places as well. What had happened in New York was enormous in scale, but it was not different in kind from events that had been occurring in many parts of the world for a very long time. How do you know if you look at an anxious person that you know he or she is, is worried about that and not about the bill that he can't pay or the chicken that he left in the oven, I, you know, forgot to turn off the gas. I mean, you don't know that at all, but I'm not sure that that's important because in fact it's the uncertainty that's, you know, that's the real subject of the work. The people in the wounded cities, look, you know, in every one of these wounded cities, there were plenty of people who were laughing and, you know, celebrating and, and having a good time. The, objective is not to show you all the things that were happening in each one of these cities at any given time. It's not that at all. It's to evoke one specific way of feeling, which might or might not be related to the things that we fear. <laughs> 